Good afternoon. Today is the 29th of June. Unusually you'll be seeing this video actually on the, uh, on the day that it's recorded. And I have my car back. We're just on the uh, outskirts of Winchester here, so done around 150 miles since I picked it up from Mr. Coleman, a rubbish mechanic, uh, on Monday. And uh, so far it's a lot better than it was. Mr. Coleman had the car for two weeks. You would have seen the ownership report, many of you, um, on this car, the two-year ownership report, which was uh, recorded earlier this month and then put out onto my channel last week. Uh, after the ownership report, the car went to Mr. Coleman for two weeks, and uh, now it is back. We shall have a look at uh, what has changed. Straight away, one thing that some of you who our regular viewers will notice is that the headlining is no longer sagging in that corner. It has been fixed, which is most pleasurable. Don't like saggy headlining viewers. It's a very common problem on the, these old Rovers. Another common problem is these door cards. Now they've been temporarily fixed. You can see there's a bit of adhesive on here, but they are better than they, are, they were. They aren't completely fixed though. And I think I'm going to have to go down the route as so many owners of MGZSs and 45s and 400 HHRs and um, you know many other similar cars of this time and actually get these recovered. Um, it's not going to happen for quite a long time. Uh, it is quite a difficult job and I have to, have to take these cards off and send them away but uh, that is eventually what will happen. No other real changes uh, in here I'm afraid to see. Uh, but uh, that's not really a problem because most of it was okay anyway. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet, not that there's an awful lot to see really. Other than uh, giving this a bit of a wipe down, I don't think Mr Coleman's had to do too much under here. My coolant level is still absolutely fine. Uh, oil has always never been a problem in this car. I don't think it actually leaks oil at all. Actually, for a car that's 19 years old, isn't too bad. He has given this a service though. Uh, we've changed the oil and the air filter. That's one of the easiest air filters to change actually ever. It takes about 30 seconds. I've done it myself in the past. Um, but the major work has actually been done so underneath the car. You can't really see this too well, but those brake discs are brand new as are the pads. Um, and sort of underneath the wheel arches, we're actually non standard now because we've got sort of black stuff and you can't really see in this arch so much I'll show you in the back one this isn't how the cars came as standard by the way they would have been silver my car was silver until quite recently actually um, but we've now actually have this coated so we don't have any more rust problems because the rust actually on the car was just sort of underneath this section here um, which is just underneath my passenger I can't really show you this I'd have to kind of get something that bit better than this phone. I've got some pictures of that and I will put them into video a bit later but that's actually the major issue with the car was the sort of rust and the brakes. So we'll show you a few photographs of that a little bit later on because I do have some from Mr. Coleman. Um, but we'll take a look actually in the boot now because there are some parts which have been changed. So the main issue with the brakes was caused by this, a broken reluctor ring. This is about a £10 part, but my gosh did this cause no end of issues. We'll go for a drive a little bit later and I'll just um, kind of explain to you what the difference is. I mean, this caused the ABS to keep coming on at the wrong time. It wore the brake discs out. These brake discs I've only done about 7,000 miles and they're a year old and they are just absolute a scrap really um, that's all I can that's all I can say you can see these little worn bits in them another thing that was changed as well whilst taking about ruttering off it's quite a difficult job but actually it's not easy was uh, the tie road end on one side which uh, as you can see we can't use this anymore because that bit had to be sort of broken and getting it off it's um, yeah but it's only a 15 pound part it didn't really matter that was uh, easy enough and then we've got uh, this spray adhesive that was used for the uh, door cards and the headlining, which is good. See if we've got anything else in here. Roger! My 
goodness me, what's he doing in here? I, you know, children shouldn't drink coolant, should they? Last time we found him in the Sanyon glove box. Come out of there, Roger. Don't do that again. Right, I will show you some photographs of uh, the work of Mr. Coleman Sprite with me, and then we'll go for a little drive to put you somewhere safe. your ABS sensor and the old magnetic tone ring. There we go. There you have it sir, built up, new trap and end on, as you knew. We looked a ring ring on the inside. I'm going to give everything a good clean up under here and then put the black stuff on. That's gone rather well. Skies, and on every occasion that you do a dance smile. Every time Test drive in a couple of hours once that's dry. So, one of the main issues with uh, with this car and the brakes was the uh, ABS would just kick in randomly, normally below about 20 miles per hour. So, we'll go up to about 30 and uh, we'll stick the brakes on and see if the ABS kicks in. Right. 30. Nothing. Excellent. Sometimes when you were pulling away and you'd done a stop like that, the ABS would still be functioning as you were driving up the road. And eventually, if you went fast enough, it would just turn off or you could just jab the brakes another time and, uh, you know, it would sort itself out. But, um, Yes, it was very, very annoying. Those pads that were on those discs, unfortunately I don't have those actually, um, but you know what worn out pads look like because you have a similar problem on the old uh, 216 that I had a couple of years ago. And uh, those pads didn't just wear out, they sort of fell apart. So we'll stick the window up and um, we'll come back in just a moment when we're on a bit of a faster road and we'll see if the second issue that the brakes had is still there. So this is the A3090 which uh, runs to the south of Winchester. It has a 60 mile an hour speed limit so it's ideal for testing what we need to test. So we down towards the roundabout with the M3. Nice and clear today unlike some of the time and what would happen before this was all sorted out was that you'd get up to maybe 60 like I'm doing now and you start to brake and at about 40 miles an hour there'd be just horrific horrific shaking through the steering wheel and um, so we're braking now to down to about 40. Absolutely, utterly nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Straight and true. Mr. Coleman didn't done the tracking for me. He swapped the wheels around from front to back. And everything's nice and even. We don't have this uh, sort of shuddering coming through the steering or anything. It's one of the reasons actually my lady wife stopped driving this car for some time because she was a bit concerned about it. And obviously it was a bit concerning because it meant that you know it's worrying about things like drive shafts eventually if you have this sort of shuddering coming through. But again, another roundabout, just about to join the M3, nothing. Nothing at all. So two separate 
problems with the brakes, um, both caused by the reluctance ring, because uh, it, when it kept sticking on the ABS necessarily, it would just wear the, the uh, inside pad in particular out, and therefore produce a lot of a lot of uh, you know unnecessary wear on the discs. So there we are. That's uh, that's it. You've seen photographs of before and after. You know bits of carbon have been welded and bits of protection that have been put on the underneath to stop it rusting again. Upholstery glue, all kinds of things. I think that's a satisfactory job for now. There are still bits to do on this car. But, uh, you know, we're very happy now. So if I give us so much to do once again for watching, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we'll see you again soon for more Relaxing motor.